Oh, hi. This is Digital Beers Born. Welcome back for more AP Art History. We're looking at the indigenous Americas, and we're focusing on North America with a site known as the Great Serpent Mound. The site is found in the state of Ohio. Let's start by taking a look at the content. Now, what we're looking at here is a sculpture shaped out of the earth itself. From the ground, it just looks like a small hill, but from an aerial shot, you can see that it is a 13 foot long, three foot high earthen sculpture. To get a better look at the sculpture, let's take a look at this drawing. We see a large circular shape over here on the right, a curving wiggly line, the curls over here on the left. Now, what this actually depicts is slightly mysterious, but the assumption is that perhaps this is a depiction of a snake. For many of the indigenous cultures in this part of the United States, snakes were seen as a good sign for crop fertility. Snakes would eat pests that could potentially damage crops, so they were seen as a positive symbol for uh, good farming. Now, if you notice over on the right side, there is a very large circular shape where the head of the snake might be. That could be the eye of the snake. There's some theories that perhaps it is a depiction of a snake eating an egg. But in any case, this is what's known as an effigy mound. An effigy mound is a raised pile of earth that's built in the shape of an animal, symbol, human, or other figure. indigenous cultures of this part of North America built a lot of effigy mounds. Most of them have been destroyed. As land was turned into farmland or as towns and cities were built, these effigy mounds were destroyed. The Great Serpent Mound has been preserved. Now let's take a look at the form. This mound is purely made out of soil. It's earth and, and clay and rock. And that's it. The earth itself has been shaped into the, into the shape of the serpent. It's a very abstract depiction of a serpent though. It does not look super true to nature. Now, looking at this illustration, we can get an idea of where the serpent's head and body is. Perhaps that's maybe even a tongue, but it's abstracted to the point where we can't necessarily easily recognize this as a true depiction of a snake. Now the context for this, we know that it was built by the Mississippian culture, which is a name given to a number of groups that are indigenous populations in what is present day Ohio. But beyond that, we know very little. There's not a lot of information to be found about this effigy mound, especially when it comes to things like function. The purpose of this mound is really mysterious. Oftentimes with earthen mounds, we can assume that they are uh, burial plots, funerary practices. Think about the great stupas that we talked about with Buddhism. Um, but they've done archeological digs on the Great Serpent Mound and they've found no human remains. It was obviously not used as a burial place. In fact, nothing is really found inside the Great Serpent Mound. It's just earth. Even more mysteriously, the only way to truly appreciate the sculpture itself is from an aerial perspective. If you can get above it and look down, then you can see the shape of the serpent. From the ground, you can't really get a sense of that. What's mysterious about that is that the Mississippian people had no way of seeing it from above. There's no large trees or mountains or structures that would allow them to see it from this vantage point. So why did they build it? We don't really know. There's a couple of things that are potential clues. For one, the head of the snake that we see at the top of this image, it aims towards the sunset on the summer solstice. 
So on the longest day of the year in the summer, when the sun is setting, it'll align almost perfectly with the direction of the snake's head. The curves in the snake's body also aim towards the sun either rising or falling at different specific times in the year, such as the winter, winter solstice or the spring equinox. So it seems to be connected in some way with the movement of the sun. Perhaps it was a way of marking specific times of the year. Uh, perhaps it was something to do with a religious observance connected to the sun's movements. There's also the potential that it doesn't even depict a snake. We talked about the abstraction of it, making it not clearly a naturalistic depiction. There's some theories that it's not a snake at all, but potentially perhaps a depiction of a constellation or perhaps even Halley's Comet. They were able to date this earthen mound by finding small pieces of charcoal that were used to burn fires when the, uh, the mound was being built. And the earthen mound dates to about the same time as the uh, appearance of Halley's Comet in 1066 CE. The belief is that potentially this indigenous population saw the appearance of Halley's Comet and then tried to reproduce the shape of the comet in this large effigy mound. Unfortunately, without any contextual information, those are just theories, the actual answer is lost. <laughs> 